Uh, obviously, you know, we'd still like to be playing. Um, you know, the season didn't end how we would have hoped. I, I, I do believe we made a lot of progress in a lot of different areas, and, and that's uh, a credit to Sean, uh, the coaching staff, and, and the, the winning culture they've established really in a short time. Hasn't even been a year. I uh, also want to credit the players. You know, we're, we're sitting uh, one and five, and just the grit, you know, the perseverance that they showed to bounce back, to get in the hunt, you know, again in December, and, and that's a credit to them. Uh, you know, we know there's a lot of work to be done. We're excited uh, to begin this process, and the process is, is already underway. And with that, I'll be happy uh, to answer your questions. Mike Liss, Nine News. George, good to see you again. How you doing, Mike? Good. Um, jump right into it. Uh, the, a lot was said about uh, the negotiating meeting you had with uh, Russell Wilson. Russell spoke on it. Uh, Mark Rogers did. What can you tell us about what happened uh, in that negotiation and was, you know, the words benching and was there a threat of a benching yeah. said during that? And I appreciate the question, Mike, and I'll address uh, the Russ situation, you know, hopefully one time and, and as thorough as, as possible. Um, you know, during the bye week, I did reach out to, to Russ's agent in a good faith and, and creative attempt uh, to adjust his contract. Uh, we couldn't get a deal done. Uh, we moved on uh, with our season. It, it, didn't, it didn't come up again. Fast forward week 17, Sean makes a change at the quarterback position. Uh, this was a football decision made by Sean, what he thought was in the best interest of the team. This was completely independent of any conversations I had uh, with the agent. Again, it was a football decision uh, made by Sean. Uh, in regards to the negotiations, you know, I'll just keep the specifics private um, out of respect for, for really everyone involved. Uh, negotiations are hard. You have difficult uh, conversations, tough conversations, and, uh, and you can characterize a negotiation really any way you want. And we always try to handle ourselves professionally and uh, in the best interest of the Broncos, and, and this was no different. Hey, George, Arnie Stapleton, Associated Press. I know you're a big fan of, of Pat Sertan. Um, will you be pursuing a mega contract with him in this offseason? Yeah, I mean, we're all big fans of Pat. You know, I think Sean said we're going to have a you know big meeting in a couple of weeks and and uh, kind of go through the entire roster, Pat included. And and you know we want Pat here a long time. I'm not prepared to make any statements on on anything moving forward. George uh, Parker Gabriel from the Denver Post. As it pertains to Russell, I know obviously the player meetings are still coming up, but do, would you anticipate him being part of the organization beyond this spring? I think Sean commented on that. We, we really have this meeting's a deep dive in the entire roster. The door remains open with Russ. I've had good conversations with Russ. Sean's had good conversations. The door is open, and uh, so we'll just kind of get through the process. Uh, we'll visit as as you know with the coaching staff, scouting staff. We'll visit with Russ and his people, and and we'll go from there. George Eric Talala, DenverBroncos.com. I know it's uh, still several months away, but have the 12th pick in this year's draft. Been a couple of years since you've had a first round pick. Can you just speak to the importance of um, hitting on this first round pick? It's important. It's really important to hit on you know most of your picks, and especially when you're picking that high. We haven't had a first round pick uh, since 2021. That one worked out pretty well, and so we're excited you know to be picking. You know we don't want to have to pick up here again, but uh, you know we're excited to be picking there. George, Troy Rank from Denver 7. There was speculation about your own status because of Sean Payton and his role in the organization. How has it gone now working a full season with Sean and moving forward? How do you see that? Sean and I have a, a great relationship, a really good working relationship. Uh, we're aligned on, on how we want to continue uh, to build this. And, and we've been through just about a full calendar year with each other. And, and I think we're ahead of the game. You know, last year at this time, we were interviewing coaches. And so... Sean and I have been through the postseason evals. We've been through free agency, the draft, you know, um, uh, training camp, and now and now the season. And so, um, you know, we'll be able to evolve. We thought the process was really good. We worked really well together. Great collaboration between coaches and scouts and the rest of the building. And uh, we'll make some tweaks. And I think uh, you know we're going to have a, a really good off season. Mark Kisla, Mark Kisla, Denver Post. A couple of things about Russ. Was Sean aware of your your negotiations with Russ's agent at midseason? And you say the doors open mm -hmm. from your end to Russ. Do you believe that he's open to returning? I've talked to Russ. He's open to returning. And uh, 
in regards to Sean, you know, I hand, Sean was not part of the negotiation. Sean was getting ready for Buffalo. And, uh, you know, we handled the business, Rich and I. Sean was, you know, in season, you know, Sean is in prep, prep mode, and he was, you know, preparing for Buffalo. I handle the negotiations. As far as your negotiations and talks with Russell, how much does 85 million of dead cap factor into it, either this year, spread over two years, and as a GM, how daunting would it be to have to inherit that? Also, to Mike Kliss's question, he asked about the Russell Wilson negotiations. He asked you specifically about, was there a threat to bench him? I don't know if you answered that question. The first question, obviously, any dead money, you know, obviously this, whatever, if this would be extreme. We, we've prepared for any scenario, you know, with Rich Hurtado, who, who runs our cap, and, and uh, we'll have flexibility either way to do what we need to do. We're not going to be on the first wave of free agency like we were last year. You can't do that every year. We'll be very strategic, very specific on, on what positions, what players, uh, you know, uh, we try to sign, and then obviously we got to hit on the draft. We're picking high, and uh, we have six picks. Uh, you know, we could we could have more. You know, we like picks, and uh, and we'll go from there. And your second, I'm sorry, your second question. Uh, Mike asked you about your discussions, and you said some things remain private. But he asked you specifically, was he threatened to be benched? Yeah, you yeah. We we made a good faith attempt to adjust his contract. We handled ourselves professionally, uh, and you know, I'll just leave it at that. George, uh, Andrew Mason, DenverSports.com. Uh, looking at the rookie class this past year, what did you think of how they contributed, specifically Riley Moss, Drew Sanders, Marvin Mims Jr., the top of that class? I thought, I think it's a really good rookie class. You, you didn't see it on Sundays all the time. We see it in practice. Obviously, Marvin Mims, you know, had a you know, Pro Bowl year as a returner, you know, work in progress as a receiver, but he had some really big moments. Uh, you know, Riley Moss, we feel, is a starter in this league. And, and he was, you know, one of our best special team players, if not our best. And uh, we see it in practice. We see the cover skills. You know, we see the transition quicks, the toughness, and the instincts. You saw it a little bit in game. He played a little bit of the dime role. Uh, Drew Sanders, same. Big upside. You know, he played inside. He played outside. Started coming on late in the year. And was really good on special teams. Uh, I'll probably leave someone out. But J.L. Skinner got an opportunity this past week and, and excelled on teams. We see it in practice, the range, the physicality. Scout team player of the week multiple times. And then Alex Forsyth, you know, we feel he's a starter in this league at center. And then you look at the free agent class, college free, you know, Jaleel McLaughlin, Nate Atkins, and then there's a number of others that we feel can play. And so, um, you know, much, much like some of the others, you know, um, uh, you know, McMillan, J. Mac and McMillan, who first year got to play in the last game and then grew the entire offseason. When he got his chance, he excelled. We feel there's a number of the players in this class uh, that can, can make that jump as well. George, uh, to your right, Jeff Legwell, the ESPN. Uh, in your view, it seems like this was a pretty common contract negotiation with Russ and his reps. But how do you think he got the impression the team would bench him? Because he he did say that in the locker room. That's a good question. You know, again, I, we tried to make an adjustment to the contract. We did so what we feel was professionally in the best interest of the Broncos. Yeah. George, after spending now a year with Sean and now Vance and, and his defense, how much easier does that make it going into the offseason in terms of trying to figure out the right players, whether they be you know pros or, or college kids, to, to fit it's, what each one of them is? It's going to be huge. You know, we've had three coaches in three years, you know, so it's it's hard on the building, it's hard on the scouts, and, and you have new coaches coming in and out. And we really, Sean does a great job um, of describing the vision he wants for each position. And, and, and the scouts have an idea. The scouts are experts because Sean talk, the coaches, you know, talk so much about players and what they're looking for at players. And, and, uh, and so it's going to be, you know, I feel like we have it in, you know, last year at this time we're looking for a coach, like I said, but we feel like we've got a, a big jump on the offseason because of that. We know exactly what he wants, you know, at each position, offense, defense. Vance does a great job of articulating as well and his staff. So we feel we have a head start. Well, do you think you know what that vision is at quarterback? Is it I do, yeah. I mean, it, the quarterback's a little different, but I, I do know what Sean's looking for at quarterback, and, and uh, you know, we'll see. 
Uh, George, Ryan McFadden from the Denver Post. I'm curious, you, you, start, you started off saying you guys made progress in a lot of different areas. Could you, um, you, could you pinpoint what particular areas you thought were made the biggest progress? Sure. Special teams. You know, we, we've been in the bottom of the league in special teams my first two years here. And, uh, you know, it depends on what rankings you look at. If you look at West Ops, we're, we're first. But uh, we're probably... <laughs> We're probably in the top five. And so, I mean, that, that was a big emphasis. And really, we've been trying to get there. And uh, give credit to Mike Westop, Ben Kowicka, and uh, Ban Chris Banjo, you know, for what they did. You know, we did bring in some players. You know, you got Mims, you got Riley Moss, you got Tramon Smith, but these guys, um, you know, so really special teams was a big jump. Spe you know, on, on defense, you know, like Sean, I think, talked about is, uh, I think the defense for, you know, formed an identity. You know, after you know about six, seven games, physicality, uh, f creating turnovers, and uh, and so that was huge for our, our team. And the offense, you know, we were running the ball pretty good. Obviously, late in the year, we, we didn't. But the, the offense, the identity was physicality, ball control. Um, we didn't turn it over much. You know, obviously, we need to get better in in you know all, both those phases. But uh, you know, that, that's where the jump was from prior years. George, Zach Stevens with DNVR, you mentioned that yeah, there was progress here, but you'd still like to be playing. How would you uh, evaluate this entire season with uh, an entire new coaching staff and so many right. new pieces? Again, I think I, th I think we took a step. I think I'm encouraged with the progress. Uh, we got off to that slow start. I mean, the Miami locker room, I mean, that was a tough one. And uh, and then you go to Chicago, you're down 28-7, 3-0. I mean, man, that's tough. And then we have another, you know, then we're 1-5. And, and so... The thing I would say about this team is they stuck together, uh, stayed the course. Sean never flinched. You felt in the building we were going to pull out of it. No one, no one had any doubt. And so that's a tribute to Sean and the staff and, and the team. And then get to eight and seven, you know, to have a chance to have a chance. And then, you know, now we just need to finish. So I think there are a lot of positives. Eight and nine, you know, is eight and nine. And, you know, I think Sean said it. But uh, uh, this is a good locker room. And... Uh, the guys love ball, and they fought. And, they, and again, no pointing fingers. Hey, George. Cecil Lammy, Denver Sports, right here. Hey, Cecil. Uh, how's it going? Good. Uh, did you have a chance to watch the game last night? A couple interesting quarterbacks. And how do you separate, as a talent evaluator, kind of watching college football for enjoyment and then also scouting, you know, Penix, McCarthy, whatever? Unfortunately, I missed the first half. We were in meetings and then uh, saw, this, you know, the second half. But, you know, even when you're watching on TV, you're scouting when you're in my position. And, uh, and so, I mean, sometimes, obviously, the tape is the tape, and you get into that. I've seen a lot of, you know, I've been to more live games than I've been this year. But uh, no matter if I'm, you know, rarely do I go to someone's house or watch a game, you know, socially or in, anywhere else. But uh, no matter what I'm watching, you're always the back of your mind. Man, this player is pretty good. It's just hard to tell on TV. You know, you can look at the quarterbacks. The receivers, but the defensive tackles, the guards, those are the guys that, you know, obviously you can't evaluate. And so TV scouting is kind of a, a term we use, and uh, it's not a good term. So, Hey, George, Chris Thomas in Denver Gazette. Now that you've been with Sean for almost a year, how different is your role as general manager than it was under the previous coach, and who has the final say in player personnel matters? Yeah, Chris, it uh, really it hasn't changed a whole lot. Yeah, my role, um, it's the same, collaboration, you know, with the head coach, uh, you know, come to uh, decisions, you know, based on the collaboration. And uh, what was the second part of that? Who has the final say? Yeah, that, that's, it's never, it hasn't come up. It certainly doesn't come up with Sean. Every day, he is so collaborative. We would not bring in a player, uh, you know, that Sean and I didn't agree upon. We wouldn't bring in a player that two coaches probably you know, coaching a scout. And so we dissect it, uh, we get into it, and uh, we do deep dives. And it really, it really doesn't, it hasn't come up in my career very often, but uh, certainly it hasn't come up, you know, with Sean being here. Scott Acing, Town Sports. How would you, going through this season now, evaluate your depth on this team? And could that be affected if, in fact, there is a decision and dead cap money gets involved? The depth, uh, you know, until, we, again, I don't want to use that as a cop-out, but depth, you need depth in this league. And, and, and really, uh, we've budgeted for anything that comes along, you know, cap-wise. And so 
Uh, the depth gets affected when you don't have draft picks because you're not going to go buy depth. You need to draft depth and develop depth. And so we're always looking, always looking for young depth. You know, um, they're cheaper. You know, typically they're healthier. And uh, and so uh, to answer your question, it, it, that really won't affect. You know, you need to get the depth. You know, the depth of your team needs to come mid to late rounds. College free agency. You know, Nate Atkins, depth piece. You know, Palcho, the tackle. So um, I don't know if that answered your question. I, you know. In watching this team this year, philosophically, do you believe you need to add speed based on what we saw at Miami, Detroit, and Houston? Is that an, an issue overall, an overarching issue? Are you saying because those teams had speed? Is that what you're yeah, saying? So, I mean, you always want speed, you know, but you also want physicality, and you want instincts, and you want smart players, especially in this scheme. And, but speed is a premium in this league. We're always looking, you know, for, for fast guys. We got a few fast guys on this team, but uh, no doubt, you know, you're looking for speed, but that's just one part of it. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks.